Hey guys, Levelcap here and welcome to devlog number 23 for a spaceship game that I'm building on the Unreal Engine with my buddy Rich and a bunch of help from the community. We're about six months into the development workflow and today I want to show off some cool new weapon mechanics that allow us to actually finally start playing with how combat might function at further ranges and close ranges. Check it out. All right, so here I've got my pirate battle cruiser with a little patrol ship off in the distance. I'm going to fire a single missile flies out of the tube, it ignites as it rotates towards the target and then flies. They have a little bit of random deviation. And now I'm going to switch my volley size up to four using the up arrow on the D-pad. The main difference you'll notice here is sort of the launch speed at which they come out of the tubes and the acceleration plus the deviation. You can notice that deviation much better when I'm firing four. Now I'm gonna to switch to my maximum missile volley size and watch the pirate battle cruiser fire off 32 missiles. Now the point of this new missile spread as they come out of the launchers is to first and foremost look really cool, very much inspired by the Itano Circus, which is named after the animator Ichiro Itano who developed a cool way of animating overwhelming missile firepower, which I think was first showed off in the original Gundam anime and then just has continued to evolve and is in pretty much every action anime you'll see nowadays. And getting this effect to look cool in game involved quite a bit of tinkering and frankly we're probably still going to do some more to it but basically Rich had to redesign an entire new ejection sequence and acceleration curve for the missiles and then apply an initial random orientation for the missiles so it would spread out in a sort of seemingly random way give us that nice spray effect. Now aside from just looking cool there were some mechanical reasons for this. First and foremost a spray of missiles is much easier to quantify visually when you see them coming in towards your target. They also create enough spread so that your countermeasures need to actually move and rotate to try and uh, hit a group of missiles rather than just fire in a continuous line to take out a whole volley. It also means that missiles cover a larger surface area when tracking a target which will be important for missile dodging which is the next thing that we've been tweaking a lot and it's finally in a place where I'm pretty happy with how it plays between our different ship types. Now the ship I'm flying right now is a destroyer which is on the lighter side of our combat capable vessels so it has better maneuverability than the larger ships which means if it runs out of sea whiz ammo it can potentially dodge incoming missiles. Not too bad when you're up against one target. This will get much more complicated when dealing with fleets of ships but you really have to anticipate the missiles as they come in. Now when conducting the same test using a battle cruiser, a much larger ship with slower acceleration, dodging even a single missile becomes far more challenging. And this is as intended. The balance between smaller ships and larger ships is larger ships will be able to tank a lot more damage. They'll have a lot more countermeasure power available to them. So rather than relying on their agility, they're gonna be relying more on their abilities, which will give us a nice separation in skill sets and play styles depending on what type of ship you're flying. Now we've also made tweaks to the Sea Whiz predictive aiming for ship to ship combat and the point of this is to give smaller ships with more agility the ability to dodge Sea Whiz although make it pretty challenging. Right now I'm in our lightest ship which can barely take any damage so if you screw up you're pretty much dead but it potentially has the ability to outmaneuver the close in weapon systems of a larger ship potentially giving it the upper hand. Now we are are going to have more weapon systems and other things that might counter some of the abilities here but the idea being that if you really really like playing small ships in this game I want it to be an available path for people to continue playing rather than just being forced to upgrade to something massive if you like the speed and the agility and the playstyle that comes with it I want there to be a nice progression tree of ships that all cater to that playstyle throughout the overall progression of the game. And uh, even I have a hard time beating my own pirate boss. Now Rich has done all the groundwork for the missile and the weapon systems and behind the scenes they've gone through quite a few iterations and I want to let him sort of explain the process to get to this point. 
Up until recently, we've been working with a combat system that is mostly good, but it still had a little bit of randomness that we couldn't control. Most of that's been due to not being able to nail down the right intercept prediction math. We want a cannon that's moving through space to fire a bullet that moves through space and hits a missile that's moving through space. You might be shocked to hear that that is not super simple, but it is one of those things where I usually safely assume that someone's done this before and we can find the information we need out there. We found a SeaWiz turrets project in the Unreal Marketplace that seemed to do just what we want. After a while, I realized there's a couple things about it that were not going to fit. One was that it only dealt with stationary turrets, so I needed something that could handle a moving turret. And another thing was that it wasn't written in C++ and I wanted to move it into C++. So I did attempt to rewrite it in C++. I also attempted to do the trigonometry to figure out the moving turret situation, but I wasn't able to get it. Did a bunch of searching, still couldn't get it. So in a little bit of desperation, I asked a predictive AI, do you know how to do this? It of course confidently said it does. And when I used what it gave me, it did appear to work pretty well. That is until it very much did not. It turns out it just happened to work well at the speeds of missiles and bullets that we were working with at the time. As soon as we started adjusting speeds of missiles and bullets, that's when things really started to break down. So in trying to figure out a solution, I added some debug information and then looking at a situation where the speeds were set to where the bullets could hit the missiles. And then looking at that debug information, then I had one of those fun moments that happens to programmers every once in a while where I had to think, how did this even work to begin with? Luckily, another package came out in the Unreal Marketplace about a month ago um, that does not only exactly what we want, but included a bunch of other features that we were thinking about adding down the road, which is great. Features like a missile knowing when it misses its homing target. Much improved missile homing eliminates that whole orbiting thing that we had going on earlier. And most importantly, it has the target prediction functions that take into account a moving turret against a moving missile. And so I mentioned it's still not perfect, and it's not. Um, it is also way harder to predict the intercept location when the target is changing velocity or when the turret is changing velocity. But for this particular bit of gameplay, we want turrets to be 100% accurate. So now we're using a system where we're faking the accuracy by using a timer. I calculate how long it's gonna take the bullet to hit the missile. I get the interception location position. I fire the bullet towards that. And then after that amount of time, I just despawn the bullet and tell the missile to explode, regardless of any physics. Sometimes you can see that it's not very accurate, but hopefully we can improve that over time. Right now it gives us what we need and that's the ability to balance the combat. So now instead of some of the randomness, we have a few factors that determine the outcome of battle. How many turrets do you have versus how many missiles are coming in? How much ammo does each turret have? And can these turrets find a firing solution against a missile? Even if it doesn't end up being super accurate, if it thinks it has a firing solution, we'll say you're hundred percent accurate, take out that missile. All right, so previously I talked about upgrading from Unreal Engine 5.3 to 5.4. One of the features that I was excited about working with was Nanite Tessellation. How does that work? Well, right here I have a plane that is converted to a Nanite object. Nanite is Unreal Engine 5's new method for rendering out incredibly dense polygonal objects. But if I look at this from a wireframe perspective, you can see it's literally just two triangles. Very, very simple on the GPU and CPU. But if I take a displacement trim sheet that I built, I've been building this over the last week, put it on here, and we look in closely. I have to forgive some of that weird blue lighting stuff. Actually, not sure why that's happening, but you can see it's got some actual volume to it. So this is what nanite displacement does. And if we now look at this uh, from the, uh, let's see, it should have a nanite mode. Here we go. Um, let's go, let's look at triangles. Woof! Look at all those triangles. Holy smokes. You can look at it. You can see it's, it's actually built the geometry out of nanite. Uh, just the billions of nanite triangles. I don't even know 
how they make this performance. Somebody explained it to me and it's impressive stuff. Big brain ideas. But basically what this allows me to do is make much more complex trim sheets. Now there are some limitations to it as you can see that the textures start to stretch on the edges here. So I have to figure out a good workflow for where to use it, what it's good for. But you'll already notice that if I go over inside the base here, probably going to look all janky because I just exaggerated it a bit further than I was used to. Um, I'm using it for the back paneling there. And the back paneling over here to give a nicer depth to those panels there. And then um, this corrugated material here, that's also just a trim sheet. So, oh, and uh, the, the little material that goes around the edge here, that's part of the same Nanite trim sheet. In fact, uh, let me see, I just exaggerated it over here a bit too. This is stretched a bit more, but there's basically a mixture of Nanite trim sheet materials in the environment here. And the more I can use this technique, the fewer textures I can use and the less modeling I have to do in the long run to get a lot of good detail around the environment. Now, both Rich and I have been working on plenty of other things on the back end, a lot of UI work and back end stuff that's been going on there. New movement systems are hopefully coming in soon, thanks to some help from a community member. I've been cranking out a ton of new base assets based on islands, excellent concept art, and I want to talk about that more in a future video uh, once I've lumped together more cool base upgrades that we can show off. Uh, along with new sound things coming and everything. Uh, it's it's fun. I'm enjoying the process a lot right now. If you guys want to stay more up to date on our development, check out the Discord linked in the video description. There you can follow us more closely, ask questions, share what you're working on. It's a cool community uh, and a lot of really smart people over there that have helped out a lot, especially when it comes to just answering questions that we have about game development. I hope you guys enjoyed this update video. If you did, don't forget to leave it a like, subscribe for more content, like it, ding that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. And up next, you can check out the rest of our playlist right here, I think, and see what the whole game is about. We even have a video in there that explains the whole concept. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.